Hello everyone, welcome to Off The Charts, episode 59. I'm your host, Dan, and today I'll be tackling a much requested uh, best or ranking episode of the band Rush, the Canadian band Rush, arguably Canada's best band ever. So before we start, I'd like to introduce you to, I've been drinking this beer. This is probably like my favorite beer now. So cheers, everybody. No Grand Marnier tonight. I saw uh, that I had some Rush beer in the fridge. I'm like, no, what? Fuck it. I'm going to do this with um, some Rush beer instead of Grand Marnier. So, oh, that's <laughs> the thing. Anyway, so, oh my God, Rush. I don't even know where to start with this one here. It took me a long while to appreciate Rush for what they are. I've always liked them. I, I like them a I, I would say love. Yeah, I love them. I like them a lot, a lot now, much more than I used to. Um, I don't even know where to, to begin with this year. Like, in high school, you know, like the singles on TV or the videos, I liked them, you know, uh, they, they were very good, actually. And it's not until I heard this one song and I was like, oh my God. But also, I, like when I started buying my vinyl, I started buying a few little Rush. And then, of course, and I'll say this, when Neil Peart passed away, and I didn't think I liked Rush as much as I did that day. And I was like, wow, the rest of my shift that day, I'll tell you, totally sucked. I was not productive at all. That one really hit, like I said, like when uh, Dio uh, uh, passed away, when uh, Neil Peart passed away, just the way we found out about it too, where I was, I was like, oh man, like, so I was like, ugh. But anyway, so I I do like Rush a lot more than I used to back in uh, my high school days, I would say there, or even a little bit farther down there. And I'll explain with the albums. And first of all, I'm telling you right now, this is not going to be your typical Rush album ranking. My tastes with Rush are very, very different from your typical Rush fan. I'm telling you this right now in advance. You'll be very, very surprised with with uh, what my number one album is. But like okay. we'll start anyway. So we'll start off with uh, you know my least favorite from Rush. I'm proud to say to a point I'm like I'm, I'm missing one album but I'm not paying 400 bucks for that on vinyl but I have all of them on vinyl except one so Rush if you're listening to this please reissue Snakes and Arrows on vinyl I don't want to pay two, it's like 200 between 200 and 400 dollars for the album so I'm like no thanks like I'll, I'll wait so anyway one uh, one album is not gonna have a prop so anyway, they have 19 studio albums. I'll start off with my least favorite, and I believe this is also considered many people's least favorite, will be Vapor Trails. As much as I fucking love One Little Victory, now that is a song and a half. The rest don't... I mean, Earth Shine's not bad. Um... But this this album, it's kind of for, forgivable too in a way. This album did come right after Neil Peart had that terrible year where he, his wife and daughter passed away, I think within six months or something like that. So they did a remixed version. I got the remixed version at a decent price there. Uh, but like I said, still is my least favorite. So I'm putting Vapor Trails as number 19. Number 18. When I first heard this one there, I was like, what the hell? Like, I was not into this album at all. I'm putting Caress of Steel as number 18. I mean, it starts off not too bad with Bastille Day. I think I'm going bald is funny. I think it was about Kim Mitchell. Uh, that's the rumor. Lakeside Park is okay. 
but it's that second part, the fountain of Lamnith. I was like, that second side is. They came. This came right after Fly By Night, which was actually freaking good. I love that album. And then this came out. I was like, eh. I remember it actually buying Fly By Night and the guy sending me this for free. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'll appreciate it a little bit more like that there. But uh, you know, here's the. Uh, it looks like inside. I remember this. Well, not I remember. I, if you look at their vid, your uh, their Beyond the Lighted Stage uh, documentary, this was like a total flop for them here. But uh, yeah, it's not for me. This one, it's a little too dark, and I, I don't know. So anyway, Rush Caress of Steel goes as number eighteen. Number seventeen. This was actually my first time seeing them on tour, which was for the Test for Echo. The tour was great, and now I, I remember there was a funny... So it was me, my friend Pascal, and my friend Steph. We went to Montreal, and we had tickets. We get to, our, to the show and all that. Then there's three guys sitting in our seats with the exact same tickets. Um turns out i guess they they had false tickets because when we were the, with the security guard you know explaining our thing he goes the guy's like man i slept all night to get in line for these tickets and i'm thinking my friend pascal actually called a day later for to get tickets for this year so i'm like you're full of shit anyway by the time the security guard was turned around i'm like where the hell did they, those guys go they just fucked off they left so anyway number 17 i'm putting test for echo i mean driven's not too bad uh, half the world i like that one actually uh forget resist isn't too bad also uh, like i said it's, it just I, I find it as not as inspired as their other ones there so anyway number 17 for me is test for echo Number 16 is the one I don't have props for. Uh, it will be uh, Snakes and Arrows. Uh, I mean, that first song, Far Cry, is amazing. I do like also Working Them, them, Workin them Angels. That's another good one, too. They have a couple of instrumentals who, uh, that are pretty good there. Um, but all in all, it's not like it's bad or... There's no, there's, there wasn't, apart from that first song and work in Them Angels, there was no wow moment for me. But anyway, that's my uh, number 16. Anyway, cheers again. I do like their, uh, their beer a lot. And on the, on the box, it says brought to you by the letter beer. <laughs> but I, I like that beer a lot there. So, all right, number 15. Pretty much, I think this is considered one of the worst ones by a lot of people, is Hold Your Fire. Uh, there's some decent songs there, like Force 10 is good. Time Stand Still is actually a surprise hit. Um, Lock and Key I like. Uh, it, it's just, it sounds so plastic and bleh, like uninspired, I find there. Like the songs are there, but it's a little too computer it sounds flat. There you go. That's the word I'm looking for here. But I, I do think the cover is actually pretty cool there. It's a very artistic uh, co looking cover. Very simple. I love it. But uh, anyway, Hold Your Fire is considered by most being their worst one. I don't think so there. I'm putting this one at number 15. This one may come as a surprise for people. N number 14, I'm putting Signals. I tried. I definitely tried for this one here. I mean, okay, Subdivisions, I love that song. Analog Kid is good. Digital Man's good. New World Man is also decent. It's good. Countdown's good. They're just, I find they're just good songs, apart from the Subdivisions, which is great. Um, but I, I don't know, I just find this to be good and a little too simple. But um, anyway... This one, I'm sure, will not be a popular choice, it being so low here. But uh, number 14, I am putting Rush Signals. All right, this... 
was the first time I ever saw a music video or heard a Rush song, which was the big money off. Uh, and of course, when this came out, I knew the name Rush. I heard the name Rush all my life. I didn't know who they were. I saw this was back in a day when they had that uh, Northern Lights with uh, Tears Are Not Enough. And I saw that guy, you know, Getty Lee singing there. Then I see the video for The Big Money, which I fucking love that song a lot. And I'm like, holy shit, that's the guy from that's the guy from Rush? Oh my god, like okay, now it all makes sense, you know? But um yeah, it's The Big Money's good, you know, Marathon's good. Uh, Mystic Rhythms it's decent. Again, I just again, it's a little I find nothing matches the the big the, the first song the big money as energy and great songs goes the big money and then it kind of goes it's it's a good album there don't get me wrong there but it's eh, the rest of the the album does not match the big money that's just my opinion there so number 13 i'm putting rush power windows i do love the cover though yeah yeah they do have some pretty cool uh, album covers all right, number 12. I'll put Roll the Bones. Uh, people were finding ah, this one. You know what? I listened to this like a couple of weeks ago. Dreamline is great. You know what? Love it or hate it, Roll the Bones is a fucking good song. <laughs> if you don't like that rap in the middle, you know, what can I uh, uh, forget? Ghost of a Chance is another uh, good one here, too. I did like this album a lot and I remember my friend I'm like I'm sorry Pascal for like at the time I didn't care for Rush as much in high school I remember he was like bugging me to go see Rush I'm like no no, no I don't want to go anyway it'll, there's a there'll be a side story to this later I do regret not going to go see this there because they played my favorite song on that tour so uh, anyway we'll uh, get to that in a few there so I'm putting number 12 roll the bones again this was they had presto and then they had this one and they they were kind of getting back on the track of because in the 80s they were not loved by musicians it was kind of their dead period but you have some good ones and some bad ones like every band goes through ups and downs i'm sorry nobody stays good all their uh, career sorry so anyway, Rush Roll the Bones as number 12. Number 11. Some people may find this one a little low. I'm surprised I made it that, this high because ask me in high school, this would have been one of the worst ones. A farewell to Kings, man. Again, I did not get Rush as much as I do now. Um, Xanadu. I love like back in high school I was like I was like whatever now you appreciate the I find like Xanadu is a great great song I love that song closer to the heart we've all seen the videos for that many time great song uh, Cygnus X1 is another one of the uh, long songs and I think that subject reappears a few times there but um, took me a while to uh, appreciate when I started collecting the vinyls again, I was like, you know, I got this. And I'm like, okay, this is, I don't know why I don't, again, it's probably that fucking skip button on CDs or digital. I just, you know, I don't feel like listening to this one. This made, well, not just this, the, the format, not this album there, made me listen to uh, a lot of albums from A to Z without pressing skip or whatever. And that's pretty much, it was a good thing regarding Rush anyway. So anyway, number 11, A Farewell to Kings. Number 10. I'll put their last one, Clockwork Angels. Um, I saw this tour. This was like the last tour. I saw them at uh, Blues Fest. Anyway, this is the inside. But um, I didn't care for it as much when it came out but again when again i know 
I hate to say this because of Neil Peart passing away there, but I was, you know what? I was already starting collecting them, so it's not that. But I, I start when I started getting the vinyls, and I'm like, I was like, okay, I'm I'm getting this. But Caravan, B U Two B, what is that? Brought up to believe, I believe, is what B U Two B. Clockwork Angels, another great song too. Um, Seven Cities of Gold, the Wreckers, Headlong Flight's probably my favorite off of this album here. Uh, Wish Them Well is also a great one here too. I know my friend Pascal loves the the Garden. I, I find it's good, but I understand why he likes it because it's like it, I, he finds like it's the, the best way to end the career is with that song, The Garden. So, again, ask me this three years ago. When does this came out? Two thousand twelve, I think. Ask me this in two thousand twelve probably would not have been this high. But again, I didn't have a YouTube channel back then either. So. <laughs> anyway, Clockwork Angels, I'm putting this as my number 10. Once again, let's have another good sip of the good old Rush beer. And yeah, I did see Clockwork Angels tour at uh, Blues Fest. That was with my friend, my drummer Mike and our friend Mark St. Pierre, I believe was with us um I'm trying to remember what the hell was that tour i did see them test for echo clockwork orange orange clockwork, <laughs> clockwork angels snakes and arrows i saw them at that tour too with my friend pascal and time machine time machine was easily my favorite rush concert ever it was at blues fest the crowd was in it. Oh, it, was, it was beautiful. Great. Anyway, I digress here. Anyway, I still had a great time with you there, Caro, if you're watching this. All right. Number nine. Again, ask me back then how I would have graded this album. It would have not been high at all, but I'm putting Hemispheres. This one actually really did grow on me. Um, Cygnus X1, Book 2, Hemispheres... Anyway, the song, the side one's a whole friggin' long song and a half there. Um, Circumstance on the trees, man. Did I ever hate that song? Because he played the video, I was like, ah, oh, this. Is, I don't. Didn't really care for that song. But La Villa Strangetto is not my favorite instrumental, but I do appreciate a lot what it brings. Uh, Again, took me a little while to love that song. Now I do love it a lot there. But uh, Hemispheres. Oh, what's inside here anyway? Well, this is the inside. Anyway, Rush Hemispheres goes as number nine. I'm not talking as much about all like the song. I'm trying not to babble on about each uh, album and all that there. But uh, some I will have a lot to say. Again, you have to... I really did start getting all the collection. It was about a few months before Neil Peart passed away. That's kind of where I really got into Rush there a lot. So, All right. Number eight. Grace Under Pressure. Distant Early Warning. Apart from a really bad video there. That was, that's a great, great song there. Uh, after it, Red Sector 8, it's a great song. The Body Electric is probably my second, I've decided, is my second favorite Rush song ever. Man, did I ever love that when I saw the video. I was like, I had a greatest hits for like the longest time. I'm like, let me, let me look, listen to this and I'm like, man, that's a good song. You know, like, uh, Kid Gloves also, I freaking love that song there. So, uh, no, there's nothing here. That's how they look like back then. But yeah, I think most fans think this is only good. I think it's very good there. Uh, Grace Under Pressure here for me goes at number eight. All right, number seven. I was surprised that this went pretty high up here, but I'm putting their second album, Fly By Night. Anthem. Wow, what a song that is here. 
uh, best I can is good beneath, between, behind. But to me, uh, Fly By Night's good. I find it's a little annoying there. Um, but the coup de grace on this year, and I remember my friend Pascal and we were chatting, and this is back when the the, uh, the the internet first came out. We were all on MIRC chatting away, and his nickname was Bytor. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? Anyway, all this time, I forget which tour it was where they had a cartoon of Bytor and the snow dog in the background, and I was like, man, that that song's actually it's it's very good rocking song, like a little progressive at parts there, but actually I find it's very um, very great song. Bytor and the snow dog, check it out there. It's one of their better long ones, if you ask me there. Uh, but yeah, Bytor, sorry. Fly by Night Rush. I think it was at the the Russian Rio. By the way, if you guys have you ever seen the the DVD Rush and Rio? That's on the Vapor Trails. Um, check out they they play. I believe this part was it from that. I forget. Anyway, not to go off on a tangent, but check out live Russian Rio. I'll mention it a little bit later. There's a one song that I found was very, very amazing live there. Great, great concert, by the way. Anyway, number seven, Fly By Night. Number six, I don't care if you think this should be lower. I fucking love this album from A to Z. There's maybe one song I don't care for, but it's their first one. I don't care. Oh, it's no Neil Pert. You know what? I don't care. I... Finding My Way, Need Some Love, Take a Friend. Here again is the one I don't really care for. What You're Doing, In the Mood. Okay, that's a little cheesy, but it's a good song. Before and After, Working Man. Like, nine, uh, sorry, seven out of those eight songs are friggin', I, I don't know. People thought they were Led Zeppelin, I guess, at uh, the time. Um, this actually is not with Neil Pert, but it's with their first drummer called John Rutsey. Maybe some people watching this channel didn't know that Rush on their first album was not Neil Peart, but uh, John Rutsey. Uh, Neil Peart came at uh, the second album, and I'm not going to start speculating what happened there. Uh, just watch the, uh, the DVD documentary. It'll explain what uh, happened with that drummer there, or why they let him go, I guess, there. But you know what? I have no problems. I still listen to this album. Uh, and I... Well, I... Rush. Rash. So, <laughs> I'll, I, this is actually from the... Uh, well, not from the tour. But uh, the Time Machine tour I saw at Blues Fest where they were... With Rash. Because they were uh, talking another language in the sketch in between intermissions there. And instead of saying Rush, it was... Hey, it's Rash. Rash. With an accent there, and it's pretty uh, pretty clever. So here's Rush, my the first one at number six. So this is where it gets interesting, and you'll notice that some albums haven't uh, shown up yet there. So here's my top five. I remember to this day when I when my friend Pascal bought this album, and actually bought it at the same time with me, and we listened to the first song, which is counterparts animate what a fucking good song that is i remember i'm like holy shit that's good like, it's like it wasn't too progressive just enough talent to show off obviously there but they were really concentrating more about the songs as opposed to their their talent there but the animate stick it out i remember my friend going okay listen to this dan it's like almost friggin' heavy grunge or something i was like yeah, Stick It Out took me a little while there. I, it's a little trendy, if you ask me there, but it's a, still a good, uh, good good song there. Cut to the Chase. Nobody's Hero. That's another great song right there. Uh, Alien Shore. Uh, leave That Thing Alone. Cold Fire is another good one here, too. So, this kind of... Not that I had given up on them, but this kind of put a fresh spin, I found, on the band. Uh, when this came out so rush counterparts uh, Carol, if you're watching this this is freaking expensive to get right now i know you want this one here 
Um, but uh, yeah, they're like they're. I found them, like I said, just when Neil Peart has passed away. Sunrise Records were still selling them. Now they're all gone. Again, this one you can find it for two hundred to four hundred bucks online on Discogs or whatnot. I was like, oh, I'm glad I found this one. This one in Tess for Echo was also very, very expensive. So anyway, Rush number five, which is Counterparts. Four left. All right, number four, I'm putting Permanent Waves. When I first bought this, I was like, no. <laughs> I did not care for it that much. And then you start to listen to it more and more, and you're like, well, God, it's actually a pretty short for Rush. But uh, Spirit of Radio, who does not like that song? I'm sorry. And when I saw them at the uh, the Blues Fest for the Time Machine, man, everybody, you know, and they're all clapping to the, the whole friggin' sea of clappings. Uh, that was great to see there. Uh, Free Will is a great song. Jacob's Ladder, too, is a good one. Entre nous, different strings okay, but Natural Science is one that I didn't care for at first. I'm like, you know what? This is actually a pretty freaking cool song here. So this one moved up a lot. I remember buying this two years ago when I told my friend Pascal, I was like, meh. Yeah, it's a transition album. I'm like, yeah, well, it doesn't make it me like it more. Well, look at it here. It's actually number four now. It moved up a lot of spaces here. So here we go. Number four, Permanent Waves. Okay, there's three left. I'm sure one of you guys, well, you guys are like, why is that one album still there? But anyway, I'll explain later. Number three. 2112. Let's see how inside. This came right after Caress of Steel when this was a flop. And then this came right after Caress of Steel, which was a little bit of a flop. So Rush 2112 brought fans back in droves. Uh, the first song, 2112, of the whole... I remember back then only knowing the introduction and the priest... The Temple of Syrinx, not Priest of Syrinx. Um, but anyway, the first song, 2112, is worth the price of admission right there. That's a whole... It doesn't say how long it is here. But uh, again, you you listen to it. Side two kind of gets forgotten in the, uh, the this year. But anyway, I'm putting 2112 as my third favorite just because of that song, 2112. It's so freaking amazing. Um, Passage to Bangkok, Twilight Zone, Lessons, Tears, something. Something for nothing. Yeah, it doesn't really do anything for me there. But yeah, look at their, uh, their style back then. Oh, look at that. So, number three, I'm putting 2112. Two left, folks. Two left. Number two. I'm not frozen. I'm just waiting for you guys just to go. <laughs> number two, I'm putting moving pictures. What in the hell can be number one? I mean, this... Actually, I bought this way back, even before I started collecting vinyl as much as I am now there. And, um, I mean, Tom Sawyer, Red Barchetta, YYZ, Limelight. First of all, if you guys want to see an amazing, I, I told you guys about the Rock in Rio concert, check out YYZ. It's an instrumental. Look at the crowd singing along to an instrumental in Rio. It's freaking amazing. It's better if you have the DVD than just watching it on YouTube. But, I mean, YouTube is great, don't get me wrong, but it's not. it does not give it justice. So, anyway, I'm putting number two, Rush Moving Pictures. And, again, the second side, the camera eye, Witch Hunt, and Vital Signs, I find good. Um... Again, it doesn't match. Side one to me is a, a perfect side of an album here. But again, this made number two for that reason. Just that one side is so freaking amazing. I've listened to this many, many a times. So number two 
is going to be moving pictures. Now, number one, but before I go on about number one here, let's have another sip of the amazing Rush beer. Mm. All right, my favorite Rush album is due to the fact that my favorite Rush song is on this album. You guys know I like my catchy shit and all that there. So my favorite Rush album, and I make no apologies for this. I I listened to this album many times. Is Presto. Why the fuck you have that one so high? Well, you know what? Again, when I was in high school, I didn't care for Rush, Rush, Rush as much as I do now. But the song, they had a video of a song called Superconductor. Some people will find it too catchy something some people find it's like a almost like a participation type song you know what i've listened to that song and i never ever ever grow tired of it and i know they played it live on this one and the roll the bones tour they also did play superconductor which is why i'm like killing myself or kicking myself not killing myself kicking myself for uh, not going to the roll the bones uh tour but it doesn't it just it doesn't just end at superconductor i mean show don't tell was like this is what i'm like oh my god they're rocking again after the not the flop that hold your fire was there but the not as critically acclaimed uh, chain lightning the pass is a great song too uh scars presto is probably actually my least favorite song of uh of the album here Anagram from Mongo does another great song. Red Tide, Hand Over Fist, Paper Around. I love that song too. There, Avail Available Light is also a great song too. I, I, again, I can sing along. It might not be Rush's best album, but it is definitely my favorite and the one I listen to the most. I make no apologies for putting this as my number one. Uh, I have many reasons for it. The main reason being Superconductor. I absolutely love that song. I still listen to it and still gives me goosebumps even near the end when they're changing keys there. I don't know. I just find the song that good. And it was my... When I first started collecting, this was actually the first album I got after moving pictures, obviously. I said, I gotta get Rush Presto. And then I was like listening to the song, I'm like, how come I know every song? I must have bored it from my friend Pascal and listened to this uh, a lot back then. But anyway, here we go. Rush Presto is my favorite Rush record. Love it or hate it? You just don't care? <laughs> but anyway, that's the reason why. What do you want? So anyway, that's my ranking of the uh, Rush albums. I just do want to show you that I do have this one, which I actually enjoy. It's um, feedback, that little uh, EP that they did with a bunch of covers there. Uh, I think this is also out of print, so I'm pretty happy that I got it at the time for a decent price here. But yeah, Rush feedback. Uh, I didn't put it in because it's just a bunch of covers there. Um it's good for what it is a bunch of covers it's a, an era of like hippie blues almost there that uh... but anyway rush feedback just letting you know that i own it and uh... so there you go that is my rush ranking uh of the of their discography i know it's not typical of rush fans and i'm sure i'm gonna get a lot of comments or hate comments on the on the bottom but you know what it is what it is i i love I, I like what i like from them and like i said my two favorite songs are superconductor and the body electric go figure right huh? so anyway that's um our episode for today um on that note i shall wish you guys a happy whatever <laughs> So once again, and if you don't know about this, there's, they have, this is their third type of, this is their regular beer, but they have special editions. One's Moving Pitchers, which I thought was the uh, pretty clever title there. And um, I think the other one was uh, 
2112 was it I got the two bottles the two empty bottles there if you want if you want to spend fifteen dollars a bottle of, of beer which wasn't for me there it was a little too uh, art artsy fartsy beer there but anyway this one I like a lot that's pretty much all I drink these days anyway so rush if you're hearing this I'm sure you made enough money off of me to reissue snakes and arrows on vinyl please do so anyway on that note if you like this type of content please subscribe if you haven't done so already or tell your friends about me or this channel not just me I'm more of an idiot there but and uh, on that note we shall see you guys next episode i will b i believe my next episode will be about the ladies of rock so stay tuned that should be a good one too i got everything i need now to be able to do that episode so we'll see you later uh have yourself a good one and uh, cheers <laughs>